Hi, welcome to an Arduino tutorial from Robojax. My name is Ahmed Shamshiri, presenting this tutorial from Canada. In this tutorial, I'm going to use this PCA9685 password modulation driver module that can be used for LED or servo motors to demonstrate how to connect two of these together to control 32 servo motors that I've set up here. Let me power it up. All 32 are now running with an increment of 10 degrees from 0 to 180 and they return back to 0. Also I'm going to show you how you can add a push button so you can turn on and off all the servo motors at once. Like this. You can turn them on or if you want to turn it off as well. You can get the code for this by clicking at the link below the video in the description which will take you to robojax.com slash learn slash Arduino. Let's get started with this. I will reply to all comments and questions of my channel subscriber. Make sure to subscribe and leave the notification on. I have one video that using this PCA9685 module to control 16 servo motors and uh, people had a lot of comments or questions in regards to that uh, in different ways to control servos so I created video version number 2 posted it a few days ago before posting this and that has been separately viewed by people and I've provided three different, uh, different types of code for that This one, however, is different because I'm going to use cascade or chain, control two of this together to control 32 servo motors. Now, before going to that, I assume that you have not watched the other video or people who have just di directly jumped here to introduce this module. This is, is a pulse width modulation control module uh, that can be used to uh, dim LED lights or control motors or control servo. In any case, anything that needs pulse width modulation. So this has 16 outputs and it uses I2C communication. As you can see, SDA and SCL. SDA is the data and SCL is the clock. And it operates with 5 volts. We have ground and VCC. This will be connected to ground and 5 volts of Arduino. We keep it on the ground in order to enable everything. If you don't connect it, still it will work, but it might uh, uh, turn off uh, devices due to noise or something so it's a better practice to keep it off on the ground if you want to turn off all of them you put this to high so when you make this high all of them will be turned off using the code and this V plus is the same pin as here this is for external power this is this, this side is ground and this side is uh, the positive this is connected directly to the middle pin which supplies power directly to the servo motors. So this chip has nothing to do with the power because we are using this uh, yellow pen. These are the signal out and we are not using it to create any load on this because the servo will not draw any current. It's, it's very minimal. So the power, the ground and power will be from these two to the servo and this is just a signal and there is no load and all the load is uh, due, uh, on this wire which you connect separately not to Arduino but separate power. Length of this module is 62.2 millimeters or 2.44 inches. The width is 25.4 millimeters or 1 inch and the depth is a capacitor with a PCB 14.2 millimeters or 0.55 inch. To cascade or connect the second module, the pins are exactly the same. We will just connect the second module here and we will solder them. So here I have two controllers. I want to solder these connectors. Because this has been already soldered, I can simply insert it here. I 
and then once I solder it, I can bend it. Once I solder all these points, I can bend this. Now it has been soldered fully. I can simply bend this. And continue working with this now. Let me now uh, talk about cascading or chain connection of these boards. I've soldered them here as I've shown you. This is now complete. And uh, now in order to make them work, if you want to connect two, let's say, or even three, four, uh, you can connect multiple of these up to up to 65 servo can be connected. So this is, this is now uh, 32. So you can connect two more here. It will be 64. Servos can be controlled. I've soldered them here as I've shown you. This is now complete. In order to make them work, if you want to connect two, let's say, or even three, four, uh, you can connect multiple of these up to, up to 65. Servo can be connected. So this is, this is now uh, 32. So you can connect two more here. It will be 64. Servos can be controlled. x squared communication needs address. This device by default has 0x40 or 40 is the address for this x value while these are not soldered so if you solder this a zero then uh, this will be 41 if you solder the other one it will be 42 solder the last one now the address for this one is 0x41 or hexadecimal value of 41 and the address for this one is 40 and in this case this is the servo 0 1 2 3 up to servo 15 of board 1 and this is board 2 and this is servo 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 15. But in terms of count, you know that you arrange them such that this is 0, 1, 2, 3, that's 15, 16, 17, 18, and that's 31. So total 32 servos will be connected in this case. And here this document from Adafruit website uh, for their module, which we have exactly the same module, except it's not branded, but the chip is exactly the same. For the first board, we do not do any soldering. The address will be 0x40. And if you're using one board, you don't even mention the address. It will pick up automatically because that's a default address. But when you use a second board, we have to also uh, tell the program that the first address is 40. And for the second board, we just solder first line, the A0. When you solder this two, these two points, this becomes short circuit. and the A0 is short circuit and we are assigning binary 1 and then 40 plus 1 would be 41, 0x41. This 0x means hexadecimal value. Now let me explain the wiring. This is the ground and this is the 5 volts for external power and this wire will be connected to my external power supply. And because this last pin is the same as this positive pin, this portion is connected to the next one. So all these red pins are for external 5 volts. For that reason, I'm not connecting any power here because this 5 volts that is connected via this last wire, it is transferred. It's called V+. plus. So this is also getting external power. You don't need to connect anything here. The rest of the pins are exactly the same. And here, this pin is ground. Ground is connected using orange wire to the ground. The next pin is output enable or OE. This is connected to the ground using red wire at this point. And then we have SCL and SDA. These are for I2C communication. SDA is connected using black wire to A4. And SCL using brown wire has been connected to A5. I could also connect it to SDA and SCL on this side here, but I choose this one because all the wires are on one side. Here, the next pen is VCC. This is 5 volts for this chip only, not for the servo. This is connected to 5 volts of Arduino. And make sure to connect external power to power up your servos because Arduino module cannot power them up. And when you connect the servos, uh, this is a ground, this is 5 volts, and this is a signal. And these yellows are all the signal pins, and you can just connect them like this. 
and I will connect all the servos in here. And here I have placed the servo on this board, numbered from 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 15 on this side. And then I've come here, that is servo number 16, 17, 18, 19, up to 31. I've indi individually tested them, making sure they work, but it's possible some of them might fail. But uh, let's just take a chance and I'm going to connect them all together here. Now let me tell you about the power requirements for this. Depending on the type of the servo, for this 32, when they go all the way together at once, it consumes 2.1 ampere. So make sure that if you don't want any delay in between them, you have a power supply that supplies at least 2.1 ampere or maybe 2.5 or 3 ampere. So minimum is 2.1 ampere for these to operate. And if you're using larger servo like this or you have to measure the current and make sure to have enough power for this. Uh, but there is nothing for the module. There will be no load on the module. Uh, it, the, the module is just supplying a uh, signal and the power goes through my external power that I've provided via this wire to this point. Let me now explain the code that I'm using for this purpose. This is just basic test so you understand how to control each servo. This is the wire for each I2C communication, part of Arduino library. This is the Arduino password modulation servo driver. I, I will provide you the link. You can download it as a zip file. And after that, click on uh, sketch include library, add dot zip library and point it to where you have saved your zip file for example in your case if, you, if it is inside the download select it and then click open the, this will include the library for you and now I've defined the first board here this is the class from other fruit and we, we use that class here and we create an instance of it I call it board 1 and also the same line board 2 and then this is a method a constructor that if you leave it empty like this it, it's by default 040 but because we are using 41 we have to say what is the address for this so 0x40 and the second line is for board 2 so these two names must be unique or different. And this is 40 41. So two boards have been initialized using this line. And th these are the servo, the minimum pulse length, 120 and 575 microseconds. These are, uh, I found them uh, with experiment. I, I've done it separately in a video. I will not repeat it. I will provide you the link if you want to have a look at it and fine tune or cl calibrate the servos but generally this should work I will provide you the link so these are this is the minimum this is the maximum and this is the servo number I'm, I'm not using it I uh, put here a f uh, an angle uh, variable and this angle step I'm going to show you how to test it and then 9600 baud inside the setup is initializing the serial monitor if you click on tools uh, serial monitor you will see that this is a serial monitor value and if you see on the right side of the lower section that is 9600 baud or a bit per second so this number must match otherwise you will not be able to read it and this is just a text and here this line board one dot begin initializes the first board and board two dot begin initializes the second one remember these are the objects that we have created in here and then after that we use board dot set parcel modulation frequency 60 you can have different frequencies but with 60 it works perfectly so we don't need to bother and inside the loop this is where it comes we get the angle which i set above let me set it to zero 
So we get the angle plus the step, 0 plus 10, that's 10, and it will continue. So this line, the job of this line is to get angle if angle is below this value, uh, below 0 or negative, or this, this two pipe or vertical line means or angle is above 180, which doesn't allow, which is not allowed in servo. So we put negative sign and the angle would become negative. So angle minus the step so it will go in the reverse so it goes from 0 to 180 and from 180 it goes back to 0 so this just prevents it not to go out of the bound and here how we use it we see bore 2 set pulsed modulation that's if you want to turn on on bore 2 the servo 0 and angle to pulse I've created this function so it can convert uh, the mm, angle to pulse because you don't have to remember the pulse you just put your angle between 0 to 180 and it goes to this function which I'm going to explain it and if you want the servo 2 or 3 just put here up to 15 and here up to 15 remember up to 15 is on board 1 and you know, this also has from 0 to 15 you enter here from 0 to 15 but pay attention to this 2 and that refers to the second board and then the delay is 100 millisecond and the loop will continuously uh, take the same action. Now angle to pulse is a function that receives here that angle, the value that you have, it returns of integer and uh, using the map it gets the angle which will be either 0 up to 180 and it will map it to server m servo minimum to servo maximum. Servo minimum and maximum are those, those values that I mentioned here 125 if the if, uh, uh, angle is 0, it will be 125. If the angle is 180, it will be 575. And then proportionally, any other angle will be calculated using this map, and the value will be here as a pulse, and then angle, and I pr print the angle, and then pulse, print the pulse, and also return the pulse. So this will return here a value uh, of a pulse. If I open this serial monitor, you will see that uh, let me stop this so you can see when it is 0 it's 125 it is 10 it goes 150 so proportionally this is the result of the calculation that comes and this value will drive the servo and for our understanding we just use 60 degrees so we don't worry about it it's just for illustration purpose so you learn something from it Now let's have a look at the demonstration here. As, as you can see here, as you can see here, on this board, board two, we put a servo zero. Servo zero will go between zero to 180 and will come back. Now I'm connecting this servo to, this is zero and that's uh, 15. On board one also zero to 15, but let's go on board two, make sure it works. and on board one and servo 15 should do the same now if i connect this to something else it should not do anything because other pins are not working it just initially the power will move it so now in this one it is working now let's go randomly uh, put here servo 7 and here let's put servo 3 and upload the code now the servo is stopped because it is connected to 15. On board 1, on this board, I've set servo number 3. Let me disconnect it, show you 0, 1, 2, 3. So the fourth one is 3. As you can see, the servo is now working. And on, uh, on board 2, servo number 7. Let me remove this and test it to show you. That is 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. As you can see, servo 7 is working. What it means is that you can control any servo. You want here between 0 to 32 servos can be controlled here.
now this is the code where you can control eight servos together this portion is exactly the same and I've made this changes here this loop instead of 16 it goes to 8 and the angle is uh, okay so what it does is it runs 8 servo on one board and you see board 1 and then on 8 servo on board 2 from 0 to servo 7 and then it starts here from servo 8 to servo 15 on board 1 and on board 2 the rest of the code is unchanged And here is a demonstration if I power it up so this and this grow will go together 10 10 and then this these will go 30 30 they're very quick and then 10 10 10 every time 10 10 degrees per step Now I've set them all together in the same direction, so they move together. And here is a code that you can start and stop all the servo motors with push button. What I've done is I've defined a push button pin, pin 2 in this example, and output enable pin, pin 8. Instead of connecting it to the ground, now we have connected it to pin 8. And then the board state is low, so that means the, this pin is low, so the system will run and show the bag I've added this so and when you turn this on it doesn't show the channel information so you could track something else if you make it one it will display it the rest is the same and inside and here I've added this pen mode push button pen input pull up I used input pull up so with a push button we don't need to use a resistor otherwise you need a resistor if you don't use a pull-up just if you just need input I have separate video explaining that and using pen mode output enable pen as an output so we define pen 8 as an output and then immediately we set the pen 8 low so the module is on it needs to be low when you turn it off you have to set it high now here we check inside the loop digital read using digital read we read the push button pin pin 2 if it is equal low which means the button is pushed then we said board state 1 minus board state if board state is 1 1 minus 1 will be 0 if it is 0 1 minus 0 will be 1 so this is just toggling it and this just prints the text and we give 200 milliseconds for the button to be pushed and then digital write then we go power, uh, output enable pin whatever is the state if it is high we set it high if it is low set it low so this will turn it on if button is pushed the rest of the code is exactly the same as before and here is for the wiring this was the power enable pin and the second wire here power enable pin 
before it was connected to ground I moved it now to pin 8 and here I've connected it this push button which has two wire one is connected to pin 2 at this point and the other is connected to ground now let me demonstrate it when you initially start the board all whatever code you have so all the servers are running now because it takes a while between them so I have to press it, press it for a while now all the servers are off if I press it again they're on so you can use with the push button or you can use a code to turn it off Thank you for watching. This was how to control 32 servo motor using two PCA9685 pulsed modulation driver. If you learned something and found this useful, please thumb up as this will help my video in the search algorithm of YouTube. If you have comment or question, post it in the comment section below. And if you're my subscriber, I always try to answer and reply. If you want to get updates of my upcoming videos, make sure to subscribe. When it reaches 180, it goes back to zero.